Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the latest update to the Working Title Team's G3000 mod. This latest update lets you use Navigraph to see Jeppesen charts right inside the Dyer TBM 930. Now, if you're not familiar with Navigraph, they offer updated nav data, charts, and moving map software for flight simulators. So to use this feature that I'm going to show in this video, you do need a Navigraph Ultimate subscription. It costs about 10 US dollars a month or 90 if you pay for an entire year. Now that probably sounds expensive, but Jeppesen charts on their own are very expensive. So not only do you get access to those for simulator use, but you also get the other Navigraph products that work not just with Microsoft Flight Simulator, but with all of the popular simulators. So if you use multiple sims, you'll be able to use the FMS data to update your navigation database and the Navigraph Charts app works with all of them as well. For Microsoft Flight Simulator specifically though, you can use the Navigraph Charts within the toolbar at the top like this, which also makes it VR compatible. And in the latest working title G3000 mod, you can even load those charts into the G3000 screen like this and I wanted to show you how cool that is in the rest of this video. So once you have your Navigraph Ultimate account, you need to go to your account and download SimLink. That's the only requirement to use the charts within Microsoft Flight Simulator. You'll be able to use both the toolbar version and if you use the working title G3000 mod, it'll work there as well. You only have to download Navigraph charts for Windows if you want to run it as a separate Windows application. After you've got it installed, start Microsoft Flight Simulator and load into the TBM 930 at an airport of your choice and get the avionics started up so you can see the G3000 screen. Now your best friend is going to be the Control 2 hotkey or if you have something else bound to instrument camera preset number 2, that zooms into this area here so you can see the MFD which is that screen in the middle and also the touch screen below it which is where we'll do our setup right now. So go down to that screen at the bottom, and this is where we need to link our Navigraph account to the G3000 to get the maps working. First thing we need to do is hit this center soft button here to go to the MFD settings, and then click the utilities button right here. Then go into setup, and then finally database status. And you can see here that our Navigraph charts is not linked, it says it's not active. So just go ahead and click on that row. And what that's gonna do is give you this message and automatically open up a browser window on your desktop. If for some reason your browser doesn't open automatically, you can type in that long URL with the secret code on the end of it. If you're not already signed in, it will ask you to, and then you'll see this screen. And all you do here is click OK to allow the working title G3000 access to your account. And then you'll get another screen with details about the permissions it'll grant. And if you are okay with that, you can hit yes, allow at the bottom. And that'll finalize the link between your Navigraph account and the G3000. You can see here it says that it was successfully linked and you can close the browser. Now you can go back to the simulator and click the link account button on the bottom of the touchscreen. And you should see this message, account successfully linked. If you press back, you'll see that the active column here on the database status screen says available. And now let's go ahead and return to the home page of the MFD. And from here, we can click the charts button to open the list of charts that are available at our current airport. And I've already loaded this airport information diagram. As you can see, this shows a detailed layout of the airport, including the runways and the taxiways. As you may have guessed, that magenta airplane icon right there shows our current live location. You can zoom in and out of a chart the same way you would your map on the MFD. And that's using this knob down here at the bottom of the soft buttons. So I just like to point at it and use my mouse wheel to zoom up and down. And then if you click it like a button, it reveals this touchpad here. And if you click and drag the touchpad, that'll move the chart around. There's also this chart options button. This gives you the ability to go from looking at all of the chart to just the plan area of the chart, which is generally the map area. Then you can hit this fit width button and it actually just fits the chart to the screen completely. So it'll perfectly zoom it in so that whole area is visible. And something else that's really cool is that you can hit this uh, MFD home button right here. And then there's this little split button and that'll split the MFD into two sections. So you can see the chart and the map at the same time. 
You then use this top dial to select which one you want to interact with. So I can interact with either the chart or the map. So here I've switched the left one and made it the map. I can switch to the right one and make it the chart and then reload that chart. So mattering your preference of which one you want on which side, you can do that. But most of the time I find myself not using the split just because I want the map or the chart to be as big as possible just so I can see it well when I'm not zoomed into this camera view. And now we're taxiing out to the runway and you can see I have the airport information chart pulled up down here. And on it, you can see our current location. So it makes taxiing really easy. We can see which taxiways we're on in real time. So with this, you could consider turning off the taxi ribbon if you have that assistance option turned on, or if you use real life ATC add-ons like VATSIM or Pilot Edge, it's also really convenient when you're using those. So we got cleared for the ILS 3.4 approach into Seattle. So I activated that procedure and then here I went to the charts and you can see it has Seattle pre-selected as the airport. So I can go down to the approach section here and find that ILS chart. So then I'll scroll down in this list. There happens to be a lot of approaches here at Seattle. Then I'll click on the ILS approach here and then use the knob at the bottom to zoom into the chart so I can see some of the detail and familiarize myself with the approach. So I push the button and then use the touchpad to move up to the top there. And now I can start briefing that approach. Once I review the minimums, I'll go ahead and use that AGL number to go to my PFD and set the minimums. So I do that by clicking here and setting it to radio altitude. Since the TBM 930 has a radio altitude ability, that will tell me my height from the ground, so I can put in the AGL number instead of the MSL number for the minimums. Now, depending on the approach, you may be able to get away with just looking at the plan view by coming in here to chart options and clicking plan, and that'll just crop it to show the plan or map section of the approach chart. After reviewing this one, I realized that it didn't show all of the altitudes that I wanted to see in the plan view. Not every checkpoint will have an altitude next to it, mattering the approach you're flying. So in this case, I go back to the all view to see the whole chart, and then I just manually zoom in and pan it up a little bit. So I have everything there that I need. So here at the bottom of the chart, there's this profile view, and that has all the altitudes that I could not see in the plan view above. So I just left it like that for this approach. So now that we pulled off the taxiway, I'm going to go down to the MFD again and click here to go home and click charts then click info. And now I'm going to hit the airport info chart here. So this one will show us all of the taxiways at Seattle where we just landed. So I'm prepping this. So when I call for the taxi instructions, I'll be able to follow along on the map to know where we're going to be turning. All right, so we're at taxiway Kilo. So it said cro Kilo, cross runway 16 left, Kilo, Bravo. So I just drew that out with my mouse to familiarize myself with it. So I know we're gonna go straight here, we're gonna cross runway, then we're gonna turn right onto taxiway Bravo and take that down to general aviation parking. I hope you found this video useful, and if you want to download the G3000 mod or consider purchasing a Navigraph subscription, check out the links in the description below. And as usual, leave any feedback or questions in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.